Hello lovelies, we're going to be talking about consent in gaming. Not the, the general topic, though you know, things are bound to wander like, like they always do, but rather the specific document produced by Monte Cook's company uh, called Consent in Gaming. And yeah, it's, it's, it's an actual thing, right? But before I really launch into it, look, I am not some ranting, regressive, right-wing, conservative, whatever, okay? Despite what you might have heard, I am politically very progressive. I'm, I'm right down there in the bottom left-hand corner of the political compass, right? And my beliefs haven't changed, and it's frankly insulting to constantly be mischaracterized as, as something that I'm not. What I am is left libertarian, small l libertarian. I am a libertine. I am an artist. I am a creator. I am a writer. I value free expression and free speech over just about anything else. And I think that includes the right to transgress. And so my objection to this kind of thing is not rooted in some right wing edge lordery or, or whatever else. It's my concern as a creator, as a game maker, as a games master, as a player, about all the negative effects this utterly pointless load of old shit has on games and gaming, game culture, conventions, all the rest of it. And don't tell me it doesn't so soon after what happened to Kevin Rolfe and everything that's gone on there. But let's get into it. Let's get one thing straight from the get-go. You are never not safe in a role-playing game. Nothing can hurt you. The worst you're likely to suffer is treading on a carelessly misplaced four-sided dice. That's, that's really it. At any point you can get up and leave the table. If people are physically restraining you or physically attacking you or whatever, that really has nothing to do with the game and you've got bigger problems, right? You're always safe, no matter what, right? <laughs> so all of this advice is utterly pointless. The other thing I think you have to consider when it comes to all these tools and everything that, that they bring up is that by and large, the vast and overwhelming majority of the time you're playing with a group with whom you're familiar, with whom you've gamed a great deal, right? You know each other's in and outs, you know each other's limits, and so on. And in the, so all of this is utterly unnecessary. The only instances in which any kind of safety tool is really needed are in convention scenarios, you know, where you're, where you're running a game for strangers or a shop or that has a game club or whatever, or, or running a demo somewhere. That's that's the only time any of these tools are ever useful. And even then, all you really need is a kind of generic content warning, or telling people what genre it is. Right? That that that's really it, <laughs> because anything else starts to stray into becoming spoilers. Right? It's it's all very well saying this is a horror game or this is a horror film, for example. But if you then go on to say, there's this bit where the scary clown kills a couple of gay people, right? You're, because some people might find that very specific thing triggering for whatever reason, and I think that's an insult to people who genuinely have PTSD, then, yeah, that's spoilers. You're giving away what's, what's gonna happen. You're spoiling the story, you're spoiling the surprise, and you're spoiling the, the impact, in this case, of that horrific moment. So most of the time, all of these tools are pointless. Some of the time, some kind of vague content warning might be useful, but the kind of specifics and so on, and the, the tools that this places in the hands of players is disruptive and unnecessary. So there's, there's some basic headings under this first section, and I'll, I'll give them to you. But before we do, I want you to put your, put your grim head on, right? And think about how all of these kind of presuppositions, all of these points could be used or abused. Assume you've got a problem player, right, who just likes to fuck with everyone else's chi whenever you're trying to play a game. 
whether it's rules lawyering or whatever else. Just put that kind of person in mind, right? And listen to all of these subsections and consider how they could be abused. So we start off with, you decide what's safe for you. Okay, so basically, yeah, it's your decision. You know what you're comfortable with. You're the one that gets to decide, right? And it specifically says, even if the games master is really enthusiastic about certain plot threads or points, even if the other players are really excited about certain plot threads or points, you get to decide. The default answer is no. So we're supposed to go into our games assuming that people are haven't consented to anything that might happen in the game uh, and to proceed upon that basis so we have to get consent for everything though we can never really necessarily know what people's issues are particularly that will come up again later uh, it says it doesn't matter why consent wasn't given so we don't get to know why you don't like something we don't get to try and understand you don't get to try and excuse yourself it's just whatever reason no explanation given consent can be withdrawn uh, nobody has to explain why they're not consenting that's kind of reiterating the same point um, says there may not be a reason why they're not consenting again that kind of goes back to those same things and it also says there's a there's a spectrum for each topic so like a person might be okay with having a goldfish in their game but not be okay with vivid descriptions of their googly eyes or or whatever else so it's basically licensed to be completely random i suppose uh next heading it's not up for debate it's again reiterating the same point we we're not entitled to an explanation why you put the brakes on the game and disrupted everyone else's fun you don't have to explain yourself there doesn't have to be a reason you can just do it uh, so you can always change your mind about it, um, about what you are or aren't consenting to. So even if you do get consent preemptively before the session, it can just be withdrawn. And uh, the only bit that I really agree with in this whole thing is anyone's allowed to leave an uncomfortable situation at any time. That is the responsible thing to do if you are genuinely uncomfortable or upset by whatever's happening in a game. Say, excuse me, I don't think this is for me. You get up, you go away. That is the least disruptive thing when it comes to games, is for you to just remove yourself from the problem. And yeah, th that's it. Simple enough. That's, that's the way, that's the more mature way to deal with it rather than to impose on everyone else. Uh, so it, it goes into some more tools. We'll, we'll come to that in a sec. But I want to go back over some of this. It's basically a narcissist's charter to fuck over a game. Now I'm fine with certain things like narrative buy-in and so on where there's some kind of mechanic maybe you hand in a token and say oh I know this guy at the market or, or whatever. That kind of stuff I'm fine with. A lot of people aren't fine with the kind of undermining of the games master's authority when it comes to a game like that but that's adding and usually the GM is, is given permission to say no Right, and maybe the player gets a kickback if you say no and you you deny them their narrative agency within the game. I'm fine with that, but this isn't that. This is taking away from the game. When you sit down at a table and you play with others, it's give and take. It's not one way, right? The games master might have final authority over the rules or whatever, but they are another player and they should gain enjoyment from the game and their creation of the stories and everything else. And all the other players at the table, they deserve to have their fun as well. So it's a give and take. It's a social contract with others. It's a, a compromise, an unspoken bargain with the other people at the table. This kind of thing gives everyone complete fiat over what's going on in the game. And that can be immensely disruptive. It can completely unpick a story and in games where there's a lot of preparation work to be done like like D&D for example it's just impractical because the the game's mechanics and so on don't particularly favor an improvisational games master who might be quick on their feet and not 
every games master is good at improvisation right this just allows anyone to call a halt to everyone's fun at any point without reason without explanation yeah they can just say no and bring it all to a all to a crashing halt right not conducive to everyone's fun <laughs> okay you might be made slightly uncomfortable for a moment by something but what about everyone else's enjoyment what about the story what about the work the games master has put in what about the enjoyment and fun that the other players at the table are having All right it's not just you at the table it's weird that this kind of thing is so popular in left-wing circles that understands the concept of social contracts and group group identity and uh, group responsibility so it, it's weird to see such an individualistic and egoistic sort of concept coming out of what calls itself the left though i would disagree that they are anymore it's, it's just strange I, I, imagine you're on a roller coaster right and it's climbing and it's climbing and it's climbing and it's climbing you're just about to tip down and do the big drop the big record-breaking drop that th this roller coaster has and someone hits a red button because everyone's got a red button and they can bring a halt to the roller coaster at any point okay and they go nope don't want to do it the roller coaster comes to a halt slowly coasts back down the way it came back to where you get on and everyone has to get off all because one person out of the many people on the roller coaster had an issue with the drop or you're watching a film in the cinema right and some it's a horror film you all know it's a horror film it's rated 18 or r or whatever wherever you're from you know you know it's a horror film right you go in there you sit down you've got your popcorn yeah that builds up builds up tension builds up the the monster or the creature or the serial killer or whatever is about to make his first kill someone because everyone has these little red buttons on the arm of their cinema chair smashes it no oh no i can't i can't see that and the film blacks out until that scene is gone right, that one person because of their ego and their inability to take responsibility for their own emotional well-being has ruined it for everybody and this is smaller scale but it's more intense and there's more personal work to it than going in and sitting down and watching a movie but you, you take the point I would hope so this is a charter for someone to just utterly disrupt everything th th these are creative artistic enterprises and you're just allowing anyone to completely disrupt them I, I cannot countenance that It goes on to suggest a few tools like uh, safety words and whatever the opposite of a safety word is. And um, I'm a fan of BDSM, but I don't think the process of consent and ongoing consent and so on in BDSM, where things are actually physically happening and where spoilers aren't so much of an issue. I don't think that really relates to what goes on in the tabletop. Nobody is being physically fucked, though with these ideas and rules in place you might be metaphorically fucked. But even so, right, you don't need the same level of consent. You don't need the same level of concern as you might when electrocuting someone's genitals. Right, it's a whole different order of thing. They mentioned the X cards, of course, I think everyone is, everyone who cares is probably familiar with the X cards at this point. It's just a formalised process of saying, no, don't like this. So there's that. Somewhat more helpfully, it has some advice for recovering from consent mistakes. Um, but that isn't why people use these things. That isn't why people call a halt a lot of it is a hey look at me sort of situation as again happened with the Kevin Rolfe uh, incident if you don't know what happened there um, a games master was running a genre mixed game um, and had something happen to the players they were basically kid drugged and kidnapped that they took as being anal rape for some reason 
and nobody listened to the guy at the at the other side of this they all took their side when they could have and should have removed themselves from the situation if they were that upset um, and the guy's basically been barred from conventions for yeah even if I do the maximum I can to be generous towards their side it's something that happened off camera and was all down to their own personal interpretation and that someone else's interpretation of what you've presented is apparently enough right so there are assholes out there already abusing these systems that people have put in place like the anti-harassment policies to fuck people over and to be performatively woke and this is a profoundly unuseful development in in gaming for conventions and all the rest of it and x cards is one of the most popular ones there's the other card that you can tap to show that you're not comfortable uh, lines and veils is the other one but that's more in um, in LARP situations we used to have fade to black in the Camarillo which I always thought was a bit silly but was a recent uh, you know a reasonable compromise someone could just say oh, I'd like to fade to black here and you know whatever happened happened lines and veils are a bit more formalized so yeah all of this is just uh, I mean uh, the coping advice yeah it's good that it's there but it's mostly you should learn from the person who withdrew consent and not anything from the other side about finding a compromise. Instead, it's demanding apologies and all the rest of it. Aftercare is another term borrowed from BDSM, which they talk about here. So, you know, be, be aware. Be aware that people need to cool down after gaming, whatever. Be aware of bleed, where the emotions of a character affects the emotions of the player. If you can't recognize and draw a line between fiction and reality, you should not be role-playing. You should not be consuming media. Old psychological studies from, I believe, the 80s, when D&D &D was you know, an object of concern due to the satanic panic and other things, studies were done that showed that regular gamers are better at discerning reality from fantasy than most people. So this is even less needed in in the gaming space than it is in in regular society. Uh, just uh, this this bugs me so much because the intent is good, right? You want to have a a nice, enjoyable experience for everybody. But what's nice and enjoyable can vary. I don't like roller coasters. Plenty of people do. Uh, you know, some people like horror films. Some people like My Little Pony. Tastes differ, what people enjoy differs. Some people like being scared, some people like being horrified, some people like being titillated. Whatever it might be, there's, there's no universal here. This is like demanding that everybody watch the Care Bears movie rather than a movie that they like. It, just, it, it makes no sense whatsoever. And it's frustrating because it's coming from a good place and because any objection is taken as necessarily coming from a bad place. Ugh, uh, I'll come back to that. Um, they give links to other resources by terrible people who spend a lot of time on Twitter calling people out and then blocking them. So <laughs> you need to worry about that. Gender pronoun name tags come up. Again, um, there are people who genuinely have gender identity issues. There are also a lot of people who are doing it for attention. Sorry, but it does appear to be true. And they're insufferable, and they will even cancel people on their own side, as we've seen recently with ContraPoints. Um, and at the end of the whole thing, there's this huge RPG consent checklist. So now you've got to fill out a form, a consent form. <laughs> this just reminds me of those um, sexual consent forms that were going around universities <laughs> a while back. <laughs> okay, uh, right, so you agree to oral sex, uh, no anal, you agree to vaginal penetration, and I agree that you're allowed to call me daddy uh, no more than three times. Okay, we're all agreed. Okay, if I just get the notary to stamp that for me. Okay, right. Uh, I'm not in the mood anymore. <laughs> so, 
Uh, so what they have here is this is this checklist, and it's not unlike those um, purity tests or the BDSM kink checklists and things. You know, do you consent to there being bugs, blood, demons, eyeballs, gore, harm to animals, harm to children, rats, spiders, empty spaces for you to write in your own, romance, do you want to fade to black, have it explicit between PCs and NPCs, between PCs, blank, blank, blank. Do you want homophobia to come up, racism to come up, real world religions to come up, sexism, specific cultural issues, blank, blank, blank. Cancer, is that okay? Claustrophobia, is that okay? Freezing to death, gaslighting, genocide, heat stroke, natural disasters, paralysis, police, pregnancy, miscarriage, severe weather, sexual assault, starvation, terrorism, torture, thirst, additional topics. Do you want the GM to follow up on any of this with you? Uh, again, it's just, there, there is no game to be had if you're that concerned over everyone and every little thing that might upset someone there's give and take this is all take all of it look like i say i understand that this whole thing is coming from a good place but i also understand that it is the personal bugbear of really only a handful of people on twitter it is, or at least you must admit, has the potential to be extremely disruptive. It's one thing if you want to bring in this shit in your own game, but this is spreading and it's becoming an expectation. Conventions are saying that you have to use lines and veils or the, or the X card or, or whatever else it might be. That's not a good development. And when publishers of regard, though I think this may be something of a damage limitation exercise due to association with Zack Smith, that's a whole other story. When publishers start engaging in this, then people are coming into gaming and expecting this to be the norm when it's not. And you're hobbling people's creativity and you're giving one narcissistic asshole at the table veto power over anybody and everybody else. Right, without the commensurate responsibility that is incumbent upon the games master of the game. Now, I've just been writing my own chapter on these issues in one of my games, which might seem a touch hypocritical, but my solution is the M card, right? Where you explicitly mark out that whatever game you're playing is going to include nasty, horrible shit, or, or could, or might, or will, Right? And anyone who might possibly have any issue with any of that can fuck off. And that seems like a better solution to me. If some people can have, right, this table is mature, but it seems that putting that on the sign-up sheets isn't enough, given what happened at UK Games, Games Expo. But if we can have that, if we can allow people to rate their own games so that these kind of people consent by sitting down at the table or signing up for the game, that seems like a good solution. And I certainly won't be playing at the table of anyone who has an X card or talks about lines and veils or asks me for, for consent. I'll go and find someone mature, someone creative. Yeah, the risk here is that we stifle creativity, that we stifle the artistic outlet that gaming can be. And furthermore, this kind of thing, the, the trigger warnings and the, and the consent and so on, isn't helpful to people's mental health. You get stronger, you get better by exposing yourself to these things in a safe environment. Trigger warnings don't help. There's plenty of, of papers out there on this if you want to go and look, look it up yourself. Similar issues here. So it's not even helping the people it's supposed to be helping, at least not in the long run. And there's nowhere safer to explore these things that you find difficult than in a game amongst friends. Sang.
priest. I'm your shrink. I'm your main connection to the switchboard of souls. I'm the magic man. The Santa Claus of the subconscious. You say it. You even think it. You can have it.